Hi, welcome to Derek Does. Today, we're doing this. This is the Union Special 11900 cover stitch. This particular machine dates probably, I would assume, I don't have the exact uh, serial to date it. I have to call Union Special to find out, but I would guess it probably is in the late 20s, 30s in that range, uh, because it's the first generation of the Union Special cover stitch. This particular model is an up the arm cover stitch because the work moves from here up the arm. Uh, there's off the arm, which it moves off the arm. That's a different type of machine. Um, and there's flat beds, and there's all sorts of different types of machines. Uh, this particular machine, though, is uh, one I've had uh, for a couple years. I bought it in a group of machines and got it working, uh, although it is having some trouble with the cover stitch itself. Uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, but before we do, if you enjoy this type of information, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to have a bunch of stuff like this as Derek does. Sometimes I'll be doing machines, I'll be restoring machines, I might just be showing machines like today. Uh, but I will uh, be playing with this machine uh, to get it to work correctly, but I thought I'd have to show you too. So this is the cone and if you pull this out you can actually see the one looper right here. I'll use this to point. So you have this as your looper, this is your needle guard uh, to protect um, so the needles don't get broken and smash into your looper. Uh, some of the early, early machines that I've had in the past didn't actually have that because it hadn't been invented yet. Um, so this piece here lifts up and here you can see all the detail of the uh, machinery. Uh, and then each of these little holes here, let me point again, so you got to hole here, you got a hole here, you got a hole here. Every single one of these is actually a hole for you to put your oil in. Uh, now keep in mind that someone like me, I don't use this machine 12 hours a day like it would be in the factory. Um, so in the factory there'd be actually guys that move around constantly uh, oiling all the machines, adjusting. They had people on call that work there besides the uh, operators that they would actually take care of the machines because without the machines, the company isn't making any money. Um, so this chain here actually goes to a lever on the bottom that makes it go up and down. So it pulls there, pivots here, and the foot goes up and down so you can do your work without using your hands. Your hands can handle the material and not handle uh, the machine. All they have to do is just keep pushing the material. Uh, back here is the um, tension and thread for the looper. Uh, and then back here, this lifts up, and this is where the thread comes in. It goes underneath these items here, and it actually gives it tension and holds it so that it's all timed, so that when the needles come down, um, the thread's going correctly. Um, and then on this side, you can see these are the two tensions for the uh, top needle sections. Uh, and again, everywhere there's a hole, that's where you oil it up. And then that needle, here actually you can see the Union Special, I'll put that down a little bit, but it actually says Union Special. Um, and then the threads come around, they go through these little things and there's a little tension down here it goes through and then it gets threaded through here and goes out that way so let's put it back together so here it is put together and I will show you although I'm having some issues with this machine actually the uh, left needle for some reason isn't picking up correctly on the cover stitch. But I'm going to show you how it works uh, and I'm going to keep messing with it. Um, that's the thing about these old machines. They're fantastic. I love them. I love the whole fact that you get to work on them and um, they're not self-oiling. You have to oil them yourself. But I'll just show you. Um, so you put your material in. This is just some scrap material.
So if you were making uh, some sort of garment, uh, you would just run this material up. Um, later they made machines that went to the side, uh, which actually make a little more sense. Uh, but as you can see, I'm missing one side, the left side. It's uh, not picking up. I was picking up earlier, and I'm pretty sure it's maybe a needle issue. Um, one other thing too about these old machines is sometimes the needles that they came with originally, they don't make anymore uh, because machine technology has moved on. And these are really antiques. Um, again, this is almost 80 years old probably. Uh, I'll show you in detail like all the little pieces of it and it's a really neat machine. I love these. Uh, they're really pretty um, and they do some really cool stuff. Like this particular one um, does the uh, cover stitch. Now I have another one that's very similar. It's a 31500. It looks almost the same but it does a uh, double needle chain stitch. It actually does three double needle chain stitch. It was originally used in the denim industry back in the 20s. Again, your material goes in here. Now this could be the end of a t-shirt, this could be a swimwear, this could be any garment where you would want to put a cover stitch. And if you're not familiar with cover stitch, pretty much any t-shirt you have, if you look at the bottom and the, uh, and the sleeves themselves, like the t-shirt I'm wearing, right here, see, upside down, there's a cover stitch. There's your two needles on the top and there's your cover underneath. Um, so it's a very well-known machine that probably a lot of people don't know about, but it's in probably in every drawer and closet you have. All right, let's run it. And you can go slow or in a big factory setting, you would. Now this is, again, I'm still missing that left. It shouldn't look like that, but I'm just showing you because um, I'm going to still be messing with this. You see here it caught a little bit. Uh, here it caught a little bit. Uh, so it's catching just a smidgen. It just needs adjusted. Uh, but this is the uh, Union Special 11900. Uh, and it's a pretty cool machine. Now even at the top here, you notice there's these little holes and everything. These are for different... Uh, this particular one has where it would actually have a cord you can see that a cord would run through there and then it would do the cover stitch uh, over top of it. Uh, and that, what that does is it gives a little bit of loop. So this machine, although it could do belt loops, uh, it could do t-shirts, it could do all sorts of things. Obviously this was made where it would have a little bump on it just for a decoration. Um, but you could attach different, these allow you to attach different um, folders and that sort of thing uh, to, your, to your work. Well, there you go, the Union Special 11900. Uh, this has been uh, in my groove machines for a couple years. I found this locally here in Colorado uh, with a group of other machines and bought them all. Uh, I think I sold a few of them that I didn't want, but this one I did want. Um, but again, uh, if you like this type of uh, information out there, feel free to subscribe, comment. If you think you know why, this left needle just doesn't seem to be picking up correctly let me know that too uh, or if you have a machine like this let me know i love to see it because i love these old machines obviously uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, the show today and check next time thanks bye-bye